Good morning, good morning. This is Jacqueline Richardson, Ms. JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. Hope everyone is having a wonderful morning. It's a little dreary here today. We got rain and clouds, so here in Charlotte. But besides that, we're all alive and thankful. Well, guys, today I got a mouthful about men, you know, and I find that all men are the same. So we've came to the conclusion that men got to be from somewhere else. God was creating them somewhere else and just brought one to earth and then created us. I mean, that's just my theory. Um, you know, Ooh, wait. Okay, I'm going to tell y'all the story about the missing wallet. As y'all know, my ex-boyfriend, OJ, okay, um, I wasn't planning on dating him or being with him, okay, because for one, he was much younger than me. And um, I teach the youth, so it's like, date you, no. <laughs> you know, that's how I was, you know... Looking at it. And I think I talked to y'all about this on a podcast once before. Um, However, uh, you know, we hang out with vets. So another vet said to me, um, you know he likes you, right? And I'm like, no, he's a little bit older than my son. Like, no. mm -mm." Anyway, so we took a trip. You know, by the time we came back off the trip... um, I had started looking at things a little bit differently. Okay. We decided to, um, as you know, he's into the same things I'm into. He wants to be an entrepreneur. Um, he wanted to be in the music industry. Um, he knew that I wanted to apply to have a TV show for our family. Um, he knew a lot about the things that I wanted to do, you know. And I don't know if he was using it against me to be in that spot, you know, the I'm the man spot um, or what he was doing. I don't know what he was doing. However, um, you know, I'm a real subtle mate. You know, that's just who I am. You know, I'm not the mate that's always... Uh, on edge, bugging out. I'm not, I'm just very, I'm a very calm person. I'm a cancer. So we just sit back and observe. We just, we do our own thing. You know, that's who we are. Um, Until you come at me, then there's a problem, you know. So me and him had a wonderful relationship, okay? I mean, we didn't argue. Um, Even when we had the little situation about his wallet, we didn't argue. Uh, We avoid argument. We talk about it, you know, um, after I really looked at it, I was like, damn, he's actually a perfect mate, you know? So I said, okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna give it a try. Well, guys, he came, came in, you know, doing what men do, you know, um, wanting to rearrange and take control and I was okay with it. You know, I was, I was fine with it, but there were certain um, standards that I had, you know, um, I don't do wrong to people, you know, and he wanted me to get rid of a lot of stuff. And I said, no, I can't because for one, I'm supposed to be opening up a nonprofit store. So if I have a storefront where people can come and get clothes and get food, you know, it would better serve the community. However, um, he understood, but he wanted to get rid of some things, some things. Well, the story about the missing wallet took us took us to a deep end, okay? And I want y'all to hear the story, and this is why I say that men need to listen, okay? They need to listen, okay? Just because your parents raised you a certain way don't mean it was always the correct way. There's no handbook saying that this is the correct way on how to raise a child. However... I've been in foster care. I've taken care of other people's kids. So guess what? I get the rules firsthand. That's why I am the mother that I am. 
granted, we take it, you know, uh, for granted that we just supposed to wake up and know these things. You don't. I was blessed to have gotten that information because of the the pain and the challenges that I had to go through. Okay? However, even though he was young, he was an old soul. He was around his grandma a lot, his mom, his dad, you know. Um, He reminded me of someone my age, actually, you know. And he was a veteran. He came about the military, you know, and he's trying to get the, the civilian life out here going, you know, uh, what we do out here. Being that I have uh, veterans in my family, you know, um, I know how to deal with them. So it wouldn't have been that much of a, a rough task because dealing with veteran uh, men and I don't know about the women, but dealing with veteran men is a very difficult uh, task uh, once you bring them into your life, okay? Because sometimes they have episodes of the things that they went on, went through out there in war, you know? And he did go um, to certain areas where there was war. So his mind, um, it's not always there. It's always racing, you know, Um and I knew that, okay, because I used to watch him. I observed, okay. Um, poor baby picked up a habit, okay. Um, this is what the government does to our people. You know, you go into the service, you know, they mess up your mind so bad. Sometimes your mind, your body, everything. And... um. You go through these challenges, you know. Matter of fact, I had to write Governor Cooper on behalf of him because I've seen some things that he was going through that he shouldn't have been going through, you know. Um, So he can be titled as disabled, you know, and maybe try to work his way back into um, the civilian lifestyle. However, this particular day, he wanted to rearrange and tear up the house. And and like I said, I was okay with it. You know, um, he kept calling me at work and, well, you know, we can do. I said, do what you want. Okay. Because I'm at work. I don't care. I got to make the money. Okay. Uh, do what you want. I don't care what you do. Just talk to me about it when I get home. You know, he's like, well, you know, I just wanted to ask. I get it. But if we're in a relationship and we're, we're trying to build something, you have to put your input in as a man. And you don't want a man to feel less than a man. So you allow him to do what he do. And if you are, like I told him, I said, okay, if you're going to rearrange things, <clears throat> just let me know what you've done and how you've done it. <clears throat> I'm easy to get along with. I'm not going to come in here yelling and screaming at you. Why did you do this? Why did you do that? I'm going to just say, this is how, you know, uh, you wanted to set up. Okay, so where is such and such and such and such? Because I need to be able to go to that. I don't mind because I lived in a veteran household. Okay, for many, many years. And they like to keep everything in place. That's how I was raised. So I didn't care. I I, I kind of, to be honest with you, I was kind of glad because he was able to organize some things. When I didn't have the time because I'm always working. He even redid the towels. This is how we're going to do the towels. Okay, no problem. Whatever you say, we'll fold the towels like that now and put them in. In the closet. I don't care. (laughs) As long as it's me and I'm able to go to find it. Well, he wanted to get up in the storage. So he got up in the storage. I, I think I've seen the pictures of that on um, Instagram. He got up in the storage. And um, start pulling everything up. So now he got all the stuff on the balcony, all the stuff in the, bed, in the living room. 
and the place is a mess. So in the midst of him uh, doing all of this, he stops and he goes, no, his phone rings. And he waits a few minutes and goes, I'll be back. And I'm like, okay. I said, you better bring your butt back. I said, because you want to left all this mess in the living room and don't leave this stuff for me to do. You know I got to go to work. So I'm, I'm going to talk for myself. But other than that, I'm easy to get along with. As long as you're not doing something to me, to hurt me. So, meanwhile, you know, I'm trying to go through the stuff in the living room. So then he comes back. And he has a beer. And I'm looking at him. And I say, so you went to get a beer? No, I, I went over here, blah, blah, blah. And I just grabbed one on the way. Why are you drinking beer? You know I hate that. I hate when the beer comes through your pores. And he just looked at me. I said, you need help. Okay, and that's what I'm supposed to do if I'm playing the part of his other half. I'm supposed to tell him when I see things that's not right for him. You're walking around like an old man drinking beer. I get that you've been through a lot over there. You went to Iraq. You was all over the place. You, I get it. But we got to find another way, whether it be counseling, whether it be, you know, me having to hold you while you're going through whatever you're going through, whatever you need. I'm here to help you through this. Well, guess what? He goes back inside the storage. Hmm. He goes back inside the storage. I don't know how, but then again, things happen. If his wallet was in his pocket, and he, it being at the stories is a tight place. It could have possibly slipped out on the floor. Because that's where I found it. Okay. A whole, almost a whole year later. Okay. This happened last June. I believe. Okay. So I mind you, he didn't really have to spend that much money. But he didn't really need it. And he didn't really go nowhere. Okay. Um, he stayed home most of the time and did his schoolwork or whatever he was doing on the computer, sitting on the balcony, you know, enjoying himself or whatever the case may be while I was at work. So he really didn't have, you know, to be running around that much. So one day I come home from work early and, um, he had already cleaned up. House is clean, bed made, and um, he's sitting watching TV, and then he decides he wants to go out. And I'm like, well, I came home early so we could spend time. I could cook dinner for us or whatever the case may be. All right, well, go ahead. While you're going out, I'll cook dinner. So I asked him to pick up something from the store. Okay, this is how we found out that the wallet was missing. I said, oh, I forgot to go get my snacks for work. Um, and my noodles, because I always eat noodles at work. And I said, since you out, can you stop at Sam's Club to get my box of noodles that I be eating? So he said, okay. So I called him. I said, oh, Sam's Club is closed. I hope he didn't forget because I know how his mind is always wandering. So I called him up. I said, did you go um, to Sam's Club? I said, because it's getting me to close. And he was like, mm. no, he said, I lost my wallet. I said, you lost your wallet? How did you lose your wallet? Where was you? I said, look in the car. I said, look um, wherever you was at. He said he was at his mom's. I said, look in your mom's house. Um, day before that, we had went out to get some pizza and some things from the store. He didn't need a wallet because I was paying. But he did get out the car to open up the door for me. Okay. Um, when I came out of the store, I tell you, 
our relationship was like a perfect relationship. So he got out the car to um, open up the door and got back in. So I was thinking, oh, maybe he dropped the wallet when he got out the car to open up the door for me. So I go up to the store and the stores that, you know, that's lined up. I went to every single store asking them that they find a wallet. Nobody found a wallet. So I'm one that sits back and analyze. So now he's getting antsy. Okay. And and, and an attitude. And I'm like, oh, here we go. So I'm like, look, I went off on him. Okay. And I said, listen here. I said, you know, I got to go to work tomorrow. You the one that lost the wallet. You always drinking. And you probably don't remember what you did with it. I said, so what you need to do is come home, go to bed and wake up tomorrow and try to figure out where this wallet is. I said, now, the last place I remember you being before you went back outside was inside that damn storage. Take the stuff back out. He was like, oh, it's a lot of stuff. So what? Take the stuff back out and go in the storage and look for the wallets. Go to bed. He didn't want to hear me. He going on with whatever he going on with. So now I'm pissed off because it's 11 o'clock at night. My bedtime is 9. Okay, I go to bed at 9. Everybody knows I work at Amazon and you have to be fully rested to work there. It's a very physical job. So, with that being said, now it's 11 o'clock. And here you messing around about this wallet. So, I call him the next day. He has some belongings of mine. Um, and he was supposed to come and get his things. And he said, we had got into it the night before. And then when I'll get into it. It's not like how most people get into it is. Like with that screaming, yelling, fighting, all game, that, that wasn't, I'll get into it. Um, you could see that the anger in us, but it wasn't hostile. Okay. So I told him, I said, just go to your mom's. Just go to your mom's. I said, because I got to go to bed and I can't do this all night with you. You know, and he calls me Deja. So he's like, Deja, Deja, you know, like looking at me like, and I'm like, Look, I got to go to bed. I got to go to work tomorrow. You lost your wallet, so you don't have any money. So I definitely got to go to work tomorrow. Make it make sense. But see, these men, they don't listen to you. Why would you choose me to be your other half if you're not going to listen to me? Okay. Now we go through all our little drama, whatever. Because y'all know he wanted to be in the industry. So me not being hateful because I'm not a hateful person. Just because you don't want to be in the industry, I'm going to still turn... I mean, you don't want to be with me, I'm going to still turn you up. So I did my part to turn him up. He tried his best to do whatever he needed to do on his end to, you know, uh, become the person he wanted to become in the industry. He also wanted to help me with my uh, diamond way, you know. So he took pictures to help me uh, with my diamond way, the best thing ever is for a native man to present the diamond way. So I was all for it, you know. Um, and I told him, I said, listen, I took the pictures. The pictures are mine. Uh, we may not be together, but they're mine. So I still presented him, you know, which caused me problems in relationship. But it is what it is, you know, at this point. But We're not going to talk about that. We're talking about him not listening to me. And men, y'all have to learn. When you choose a mate, you chose that mate for a reason. It's because they're the opposite of you. And you know you need them. See, I don't drink. I don't smoke weed. I just do what I do, okay? I love music. That's my high. Getting money, that's my high. And raising my kids the proper way, that's my high. I don't self-medicate. 
He knows that. It's like one day he went out. We had plenty of wine here. He didn't even need to go out to get wine. But he goes out and he gets wine. And he comes back and he goes, Hey, I bought us some wine. And I'm like, okay. Like, I could care less because I, I don't really drink like that. So he wants me to drink with him. So he brings me a, a, a wine glass with, with a half a, a cup of wine. So I'm sipping on it. And I'm like, well, for one, it's bitter. I need some fruit or something. So, you know, he hooks me up with fruit or whatever. I drink a little bit, you know, just to make him happy that he's not drinking alone. But you shouldn't be drinking anyway. And that's just the bottom line. So, I say that to say, us working on him getting better is the understatement when you're trying to guide them. Um, And I mean, I guess... It can go both ways in a relationship because women, if they having issues or whatever the case may be, <clears throat> the man is there as well to guide them and, and be there for them, you know. But in this case, um, he was having the issues and I was there to help him. And I remember the steps that he, he took. He just needed to remember. And I wanted him to go to bed so he can go and find his wallets. And he did. He would have if he would have went in the the storage. Now, here it is. A year later, almost. Okay. The only reason why I went in the storage uh, to get some things out because I'm trying to get rid of some of the stuff. Um, They didn't give me the the grant to open up a storefront. I haven't sold the copyrights. Um, so I'm getting rid of the stuff. I'm not going to keep, um, holding this stuff and holding it for what? If I, if I'm not going to get what I need, I don't see, I'm not making an effort, put it like that, to hold on to these things for my business. Um, if it's not going to happen. Okay. I'm not one. If I see a dream uh, being, um, diminished, okay, because other people are involved, I'm not going to hold on to that dream until I, I'm able to do it on my own. If I got to depend on other people, and this is why I don't depend on people, and this has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but I'm going to tell y'all, this is why I don't depend on people and I don't depend on government organizations. Okay, I do things on my own. Because when you depend on government organizations, they never follow through the proper way or in a timely manner. There's several of us out here that apply for those grants and none of us got those grants. And we have physical businesses in this city. It doesn't make any sense. It'd be different if one of us got it and they said, okay, well, this one was chosen. But none of us got funding to do anything. So this is why I personally, um, people always say, oh, you can apply for grants. Do you know anybody that ever got one? If you know anybody that ever got one, then bring them to me. Because every time I've applied for a grant, I've never gotten one. I have to do it on my own. And that's just what it is. I have to put the work in. So that's why I was holding on to a lot of the stuff. And I decided it's spring. Spring cleaning. Um, Let me get some of this stuff up out of here. And um, give it away. Sell it. Whatever. Uh, cause I need the money anyway. I'm not working right now. So, um, let's get it done. Jackie is what I said to myself. 
and I'm getting it done. And what do I see when I walk in the back of the storage? Because I'm fixing it. Because he had it organized, but it was so much stuff. You know, we had to lay a stuff on top of each other. So now I'm trying to get the stuff out from the back. Okay. And I pulled the stuff out of the back and started putting stuff back and trying to organize it neatly the way he had it. And um, I looked down because I, I was going to sweep the floor because it had some mess on the floor. Um, He had a little carpet down there on the floor. And um, I said, let me sweep this and, and, um, and shake this rug out. And as I look down, what do I see? His wallet. When I told him to go back in there. Like, he didn't want to listen to me. How are you going to choose someone to be your other half, but you don't trust their judgment? The same when we was in the car. Now I, I tell y'all how I don't I don't let people drive me, okay. Um, I know that he has to drive safe because one, he know he can go to jail if he's not doing what he's supposed to do, and he knew he had kids in the car, so he's not a fool. He drove us all the way up north. And got us there safe and got us back safe. Even though I was afraid. Okay. I was so afraid that he knew I was I was having an anxiety attack. And um it got to the point to where I had to like close my eyes, you know, and trust him. And I said a prayer and I said, I said, Jehovah God, I said, um, I know this man travels a lot and he's always on the road. You know, he drives, he drives there and he also takes the plane too. He's one of those two. And um, I said, I'm going to put my trust within him and you. That you cover him and keep him woke and get us home safe. And I trusted him. And he got us home safe. So with that being said, when you choose that person, um, to be your other half, it's a little bit bigger than what people think. That's why you can't have all these different relationships. And all these different soul ties. You trust that individual with your life. That's your other half. So something is simple. And it really puzzled me. Something is simple. As him getting up. The next morning. And pull that stuff out. We, I would have been in work. Egypt would have been in school. He would have had the house to himself. He could go in the storage and pull the stuff out. And he would have found his wallet. And I would have called him on my break. And Any luck? And he would have been like, yeah, I found it. It would have been simple. But he made it difficult because he didn't want to listen. He didn't want to trust. <clears throat> Granted, we know that not everybody was raised properly. So they don't know once a man chooses you to be their other half and you accept that life is supposed to be a certain way. And I get that. I get that he didn't realize that I've been through some things and that I'm grown, grown. I'm not a child, so, or a young person like himself, um, I'm not going to play the games with you. And I realized that 
there is some people out there that do dumb stuff. Like, take your stuff, hide it, and I don't have time for that. What do I need to do? I don't need you for nothing, for real. Other than being my other half, being there to support me when needed, and maybe help me with a little bit of bills. Because I could do all of that for myself. I didn't even need you as a veteran because I work for a company that'll pay for me to go to school. I'm a minority. I'm a Native American and Hispanic. So I'm eligible for a whole lot of stuff out here in the world. I get this this many um, perks as you do. So I don't need you for that. And getting a man is easy. It's choosing the right one that's the problem. I mean, it's easy for me. I don't know about anybody else. I can't speak for nobody else. For me, it's easy for me to find a man. It's just choosing the right one. And if their mind is right. But I've come to the conclusion that ain't none of them right. That's just like... Talk about my ex, my my daughter's father. He hates when I talk about him, but this is just what it is. Now, his his um and his family, diabetes running his family, and high blood pressure and um high blood pressure and hypertension runs in my family. So we had this child of ours. Okay, and she's subject to get any of those things. Well, she did get uh, a tidbit of the diabetes. Okay, and I had to work on that. You know, um, and when I was in Maryland, I had an Asian doctor. He was very good with my kids, and he didn't play no games with me. Okay, as the overseer of our health. Okay, and my kids' health. He played no games with me. Okay, just like you choose your men. When you choose your woman, you choose your doctors too. Okay? But he ain't play no games with me. And he said, listen here, Jackie. Dr. Silmaline, shout out to you. Still love you. And you know if I come back to Charlotte, I mean, uh, Maryland, Egypt is all yours. Um, Because he had her from birth. He saw her three days after birth. Okay? Up until the time we left Maryland. But the point that I'm trying to make is he was serious about me making sure that those kids stayed healthy, okay? And also myself, because if I'm not healthy, I can't take care of my kids. You got to make it make sense, people. So God put him in my journey because I needed to know some things. So with that being said, I... Decided to go organic and healthy for the whole family, not just for Egypt. Plus, I had just lost my mom and she died from cancer. So, of course, y'all know we got cancer cells in our bodies and I have to protect my body from trying to get cancer. Well, I tried to help him. Okay, I said, look, I bought this type of mayonnaise. I bought this for us, this fruit, this, this, this. He looked at me, I don't want that. He actually called it uh, S-H-I-T. And I'm like, this is organic food. This is food that don't have um, pesticides and stuff on it. The reason why we wasn't eating it is because we couldn't afford it. But now we can afford it. So why not regenerate your health? Because you've been intaking all this bad stuff on a daily basis. Because this is what your people taught you to eat. See, my people, we had uh, a um, backyard. And I remember... Going out there, growing the the vegetables with them in the Bronx. But it's also 
putting pesticides out there to keep the bugs off of them. And my family is where? They're dead. So, I say that to say, I've analyzed all of that. So, I'm going to put my trust within these markets and eat organic. I had to choose a market. I went to Publix, looked at their stuff. I went to Harris Teeter, looked at their stuff. I went to the Fresh Market, looked at their stuff. And said to myself, okay, let me see who's lying and who's not. There's no different taste. So you would never know. But the stuff has embedded itself inside the the um the fruit and vegetables. Who what market can I trust to, to say that they really are giving me organic? I chose Publix in the fresh market. They had the best looking fruit and vegetables. Very clean. They kept them fresh. Watered them just like if they were in the ground. So I said, okay, these are the two markets. But anyway, so I'm buying this stuff to help my mate because he eats a lot of fried chicken. And then not only um, do we eat a lot of fried chicken... He eat a lot of sweets, starches. So I said, okay, I gotta, I gotta work. I gotta put my work in. So I'm, I'm in my room while he watching TV, laughing, and I, I'm studying for our health, so we can live longer. I study, I go out and get the good stuff, bring it back, try to feed it to him. I don't want that. Nigga, do you know how much I paid for this? You ain't buying this food, but it's my job as your woman of 17 years to keep you alive. He wasn't trying to hear that. So everything I bought that was healthy, he wouldn't eat. So when we go to the doctor, we would go to the doctor together. He would get a bad report and I would get a good one. And then he'll look at me. Well, I told you. If you would just listen. So he didn't want to be with me no more because I think, this is just my theory, his ego was hurt. While you was over there killing yourself because you didn't want to eat the S-H-I-T stuff that I was trying to give you. You got a bad report, a very bad report, a, a report so bad that it can kill you. While I'm walking around with an excellent report. And you're saying how. Because, you know, he thought I was going to die first because I had pneumonia. Well, I had bronchitis. I, I went to work, got pregnant. Um, They put me out of work. Oh, um, I would think I was six months. So I was at home laying in the bed pregnant for several months and caught a bad whatever it was. And then it turned into pneumonia because I couldn't get medication to heal myself. I was pregnant. They don't give you medication when you're pregnant. Then the doctors wanted to try something new. They chose me to, to try something new after I just gave a baby. You don't try something new. This is why you got to choose your doctors, right? You don't try something new. With 
a woman that just gave birth and all everything is open and she's susceptible to anything. You just don't do it. But this is why you got to choose your doctors right too. He gives me some new stuff. He wants to try. I got very ill and almost died. So you know they they theory is oh oh she 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 could die easy. No, there was a process. They was killing me. Me being pregnant, not being able to, able to take medication. Then after giving birth, they want to try something new. They were killing me. And that's the bottom line to it. And this is what they do to people every day. This is why we got to stay healthy to, to stay out of the hospitals because you don't know what doctors really care. You don't know. Choosing your doctor is just like choosing your mate. Because you have to put a lot of trust within that person. So, now I'm at the point where I don't trust too many doctors. I went to the doctor... Um, I was uh, having some excess bleeding recently, and I didn't understand why. And I can say why. So I went to the doctor, and I told her. She said, "Okay, well, we're gonna take a sonogram. We're gonna do some stuff." And I said, "Okay." So she told me. She said, "Um, she came back. She said, oh, you have two little tiny fibroids.' Um." We can remove them to stop the bleeding. So I said, hmm, okay. So go up there and make your appointment. So I said, is this a surgery? And she says, yes. And I said, well, how do you know I want surgery? I told you I don't have family here. So why is it you you just automatically, well, you, you I got to have surgery. Surgery used to have a consultation. Now all of a sudden, y'all just, oh, make an appointment. We can get you on the table. No, 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 boo. Hold up. Wait. Pause. Wait. So I come home and do my research. Because I call my family and trying to tell them, look, they talk about surgery. And my family like, what? What is it you got? Because, you know, my family never was big on surgeries. So I do my little research it's a common ordeal. It said you want them to go away. Drink some green tea. Oh, that, that's simple. But you wanted to pull me in an office, put me to sleep, weak, weaken my immune system by having me come in there so you could go scraping some damn fibroid off my uterus. That I can have shrink naturally. Make it make sense. That's why you have to choose your doctors wisely. So I came home. Drank the green tea. And I haven't bled since. So I'm assuming they have gone. But she was going to put me through surgery when all I had to do was, in a quiet cap, I didn't even have to go to the market to buy the green tea because I eat healthy anyway, so I got it in my cabinet. You try that on somebody that's not organic, not um, healthy, someone that's not going to, that's going to listen to you. But I came home and did my research. The same with when OJ lost his wallet. I came home and I analyzed the whole situation and how it went down and how it happened. 
That's why I keep my mind right. I try to. I take my taurine every day. I eat my avocados. I have my avocado oil, my olive oil to keep my brain functioning properly. Because sometimes I be laggy too because I'm getting older. But once I get it back running right, I sit down and I analyze the situations. And say, hold on, wait a minute. I think, you know what? This is where it is. You need to go over here and, and check. But then who do you trust because you don't know who's right? So I get his theory. I understand how he felt. In a situation. But he didn't actually, he didn't sit down and analyze the facts of our relationship. To, to rule me out of this, out of the situation. When you're the one that was in there in that storage with the nonsense, not me. I was trying to go to bed because I like to sleep. You the one who want to do this and that. Not me. You did this. And then you want to take it out on everybody else. The same way with, with my daughter's father. You created your illnesses. I tried to help you. My job was to keep you alive. But you didn't want to listen. I mean, he's still alive, but now he now he's he, he still got to change his diet if he want to live. When if you would have listened to me, you wouldn't even have those issues. They wouldn't even exist. When you get a positive outcome from something, then you know you can trust your person. Just like when he got me back here safe. I knew I could get in the car with him and I would be safe. He didn't trust me driving out there. He was like, no, I'll drive. He didn't trust me driving until we got back here. To Charlotte. So I get it. But until you have done everything that you needed to do to make sure that you didn't find it, you can't blame nobody but yourself. Because you're the one who lost it or misplaced it. And I knew... He misplaced it because he's careless. And it's okay. Just when you choose your mates, just like when you choose your jobs, you choose your death. You say, okay, well, how bad can I get hurt at this place? Got to look at the pros and the cons. What a job. Now, I was working when I first started with Amazon. I was working indoors, okay? So I saw the indoors. I said, oh, this ain't too bad. Some joints is going to be hurting. Uh, I might fall down a little bit. It hurt myself. All right, that's not too bad. (coughs) Then I drove prime. Got a gun pulled out on me. My truck fell in a ditch. A whole bunch of stuff happened out there. I said, oh, well, I don't like this one out here. This can be an instant death out here. Okay? Eh, I'm going back inside. So you choose your jobs, your death on your jobs, okay? I mean, it sounds harsh, but it's just what it is. The same way you choose your doctors. The same way you choose your mates. You have to sit down and analyze the pros and the cons. 
And can't nobody do that for you. You have to do it for you. That's why it don't make sense to even talk to people about it. You have to make that decision. Because you have to physically go through it. So when we decided we wanted to be together, I knew there was going to be pros and cons. He's careless. He leaves stuff places. I know this because he did it at the hotel. Took off his ring, left it on the sink. Me, I'm the person that always double backs into the hotel. Clean up a little bit. Get any snacks that we've left, like potato chip bags, uh, uh, pizza boxes, whatever. I always double back because I'm the woman. I double back, take all the mess, put it together in a bag. That's why hotels always love when I come because I never leave it a mess for them to have to clean up. Um, When I double back, I looked. On the bathroom counter, because I always scan everything and look through the through around everything to make sure we didn't leave anything. He left his ring on the bathroom um the bathroom counter at the hotel. If 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 I, if I count the hours correct, it's a twelve hour drive. Who's gonna turn around and get a ring? Once they've gotten home and they can't find it. So he was already downstairs. I put the ring in my pocket. When we get in the car, I'm like, you missing something? And he was like, no. You ain't missing nothing. No. I said, look at your hand. He was like, oh, my ring. So I pulled it out my pocket and I'm like, here, here you go. That's why you have an other half. When you choose the other half, what you forget or don't see, they will, and vice versa. So I already knew he was careless. Because he had already left his ring in the bathroom at the hotel. So I said, okay, I got I to gotta watch him because he, he going to be losing stuff. And I got to find it or help him find it. Do I want this in my life? Okay, I'm kind of used to that because the other one I had was like that too. Always losing stuff. So it's not a, oh, he getting old. Because that's what I used to say about the other one, the baby father. Oh, he getting old. He just be losing everything. It's just a man thing. They sit stuff down. Their minds is wandering. and I don't know. Then they don't know what they did with it. And they're looking at you like you did something. I ain't did nothing. You did it. Don't blame me. You the one. The same thing with his wallet. You was the one up in that storage. Not me. I needed you to go to bed. Because you was all crazy. Lay yourself down. And think about it. Even if you got up the, in the middle of the night and said, you know what? I'm going in this storage because I know sometimes when we lose stuff, we can't even rest. But he needed to lay himself down and calm down so he could remember. But he might not have remembered because he was impaired. He was under alcohol. It was probably all a blank. So now, I, the other half remembers, and tell you, I think you should try there. I wasn't doing it. I had to go to work. By that point, he ran off. He made. But something that you created. Bringing that nonsense into our lives. That drinking. I 
So yeah, I just want to throw that out, throw that out there. Women, all I can say is you know you're going to get one that's not going to listen. But choose wisely. Sit down and decide what you're willing to deal with. There's certain things that you may not be willing to deal with. You don't want your hair coming out. Your edges falling out. Over stress. And this is why a lot of women are single. Because it's not that they can't get a man. It's too much work. They're like children. You tell them something. And they don't even listen. You have to make it make sense. This is real life. This is Jacqueline Richardson. It's JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. One day, we will get these men to listen. I'll talk to y'all soon.